Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Time to answer another you know, Patreon question. Hamlet asks, <clears throat> quick question for you. I have a table of sales reports that have a date column. I want to make a dashboard to filter out the reports by year, month. Right, fair enough. How can I make a drop down to show a list of unique available year months combinations based on the date column of the sales report table. What I mean is that the sales reports table has a, has location information and not all locations have reports every month. So when selecting a location drop down filter, I want the next filter to be a list of available year month periods for that location based on the dates of the sales reports for that uh, for those that are available. So that if there were no reports for March 2022 for one location, the year month drop down for that location would not have 2022-03 as an option. Thanks. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you can totally do what you want to do. Um, it's It requires you to create the data source first in order to create the data source is kind of a poor choice. It requires you to create that little bit of data before you can use it somewhere else. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so let's say that I've got uh, a timesheet, right? So I'm just gonna use my timesheet table here um, to fill in for your sales table, but the same kind of idea lies inside here, right? I've got a date column as well. Um, and so maybe I want to create a drop down where I'm going to show everybody a list of all of the, like I select a location and then I want to, or maybe I select a user, right? And then I want to see a list of all of the user months for that. Okay. So whatever your scenario, the idea is that you have to first create that bit of data that you want to use for it to be available inside a dropdown. So on your table, whatever you're working on, add another column. This is a very common thing that I'll do is I'll create literally a separate field that I will call timesheet label, sales label, order label, user label, location label, legit. Whatever the name of the table is, I'll create another column inside there that's like table name underscore label. And I'll mark that as the label that I use for the, for the actual table, as you can see here. And the idea is that I'll, uh, that I can use this column for the actual, I, for the actual label that the system will use. And I can, I, I can use this field to concatenate some other bits of data together to build a more cohesive label because maybe I don't just want the date. Maybe I don't just want the username. I don't just want one piece of data. I want a couple of pieces of data strung together. The way you do that is you create another field, a physical field. Don't virtualize this. There's no point in making it a virtual field because the data that's stored inside your virtual field only changes when you change the record. Whenever you have a scenario like that where the bit of data that's inside the field only changes whenever you're modifying that specific record. Don't make it virtual, make it physical. Every virtual column that you add to your app adds an extra bit of virtualization and that's what increases the time for all of your sync time. It's all of this extra computation that your device is having to do to come up with all of these virtual columns. So if you can reduce those virtual columns by making it a physical column, now it's just a static value that your system is loading. See what I mean? Um, so the thing that I'll do is I'll create this physical column that I'll call a label. It's a text, I'll mark it as the label. And usually what I'll do is for the show if, I'll usually come in here and I'll be like, context view type does not equal form. Cause I don't, I don't wanna see this inside the form. Do you know what I mean? Like. I want to see the label everywhere else in the system, tables, and when I'm looking at it in a detail view, when it's in a drop down, like I want to see it there, but I don't want to see this, this column when I'm inside the form, right? So I'll hide it in the form is usually what I'll do. 
Uh, and the formula that I'll put inside here is just a concatenation where I pull the various bits of text that I wanna use and I put them all together and add some connector bits to kind of make it look nice. Like for instance, on this one, I got the name and then I'm doing a space with an open parenthesis and then I'm dropping in the date in a specific format that I wanna see it in and then I'm closing my parenthesis. And then if I go to the test button down here, you can see what this is gonna look like. Um, and yeah, so the, the, real, the solution, right, is all, you just gotta build the bit of text that you wanna use first. So now that I have this virtual call, I'm sorry, now that I have this physical column that's holding this string itself, now all I gotta do, right, if I wanna create a dropdown of all of these available options, well, it's just a field inside the, the table here. And so all I need to do elsewhere is just select this column instead of the other ones. Like for instance, so you're talking about filtering it on a dashboard, right? So like you got like a dashboard kind of like this and you're gonna have a thing where you can select, you know, I wanna see string two instead of string one. All right, so the idea would be, you would have a, a, a field inside here, right? And then like what you would do for your valid if, if I just ignore what's in, oops, sorry, if I just ignore what's inside here, um, the, the things that I would be doing, let's see, let's see, I can get rid of this, is right, obviously you'd be, um, okay, so first off, uh, instead of doing a hard select to get this, what I would do is, um, on your locations, right? I have a location table too. So, and on the timesheet happens to be just tied to this as well. So like what I would do then is I would come to my location. I would then create a derivative list of all of the values for this location from your sales, right? So again, in this scenario, your sales table is my timesheet table. So what I do is I'd come inside here and I'd create a derivative list. So come down here, find my timesheets, and then say, okay, out of my timesheets, I want Don De Estas timesheets, there it is. Out of my timesheets, I want my label. It's in here somewhere, there it is. Drop that in there like that. All right, so like and I would do something like this and then you could do th something then do something like this where I'll be like, all right, I want to sort those labels since your labels are dates, right? This would put them all in perfect order. Um, I want to unique that list so that it's all unique items instead. Uh, unique, and then I'm going to subtract out of this any blanks. So the result is this virtual column now holds out of all of the timesheets that are related to this location, right? Because you got to remember the context we're in. Um, it's going to grab all of those associated timesheet labels, right? And it's going to make a list of those. It's going to put those in order based on alphabeticals. It's then going to uniquify that. So if there's any duplicates, all the duplicates go away. And then I'm going to remove any blanks that may be in the system because sometimes that happens. Um, and then you see now I have a list that is a, a list of text values. I'm going to hide this because I don't need to see it. Um, I'll save this really quick. Might as well Let me just show you what this looks like. And then now what I've got is on my location table. So for each location record in my system, I now have a virtual column that's a list of all of my, in your instance, sales month, year, month combinations, right? So I've got all of those label values from my child records in a list in order for every location. And so now anytime that I need to create a dropdown, why well, is taking forever to, to, to save today? Um, so anytime that I need to create a dropdown where I wanna say, these are the options available to you, Okay, it's a derivative dropdown, right? Because your first dropdown is select a location. Then based on the location you select, here's a list of all of the available options from that location for you to select, right? 
Okay, so I have a very similar setup in this app that I'm working on, so I can just kind of show it to you here. So like I have this sort of interactive dashboard that I'm building right here. Um, and so like I have a location where like I select a location and then the idea would then be I give them a drop down of all of these location, new virtual column, give it a good name of course. Um, so like I'll come into my, my user table. So this is where all of my controls are for the dashboard. Um, and like I come in here and I'll be like, hey, check it out. So we got the current location. So if I just take over this cable um, and I change this to like, this is gonna be timesheets now. And I'll come in here and I'll say, just, you see, just like what I have going on in here, kinda, kinda. I don't need all the sort and I don't need all this extra plus stuff. That's specific for what I was working on. But uh, this is all I would do is I'd come in here and I'd say, okay, I have this column inside here that is the enum space for the user to select what location they want to see. So that's an enum with a base type reference to the location table. That gives me the ability to use that enum base type reference as a dereference path, right? You follow what I mean? So now I can go from when somebody selects a location in that dropdown inside that little control box on the, the interactive dashboard, now I can use the thing that they selected as the path to get to the information, the, lit, the derivative list that I need. And so all I'll do is like inside here, you put in the name of the you know, new, I can't remember, <laughs> virtual column. I can't remember what I called it. I think that's the default name, exactly. Right, and so now if I do this, and I just save all of this, we can just see what this looks like. This might break, actually. So, yeah, that's probably not gonna come back and let me play with that. But you get what I mean. That's the idea, right? So I've got one, and then there's another one right after it where it's valid options are a dereferenced list from the one above it. Problem solved. But you see, there's a few steps involved in order to get that solution in place. You've got to first have a column inside your child table where you're doing a concatenate to build the value that you need. That way it's there. Um, then you can then use that value inside your, um, your location table as a, create a derivative list of that. And then you can use that column inside your actual dropdown. I tell my, everybody that I meet with uh, on one-on-one -on -one where they need help with their apps, one of the most common things that I say um, is the solution, the answer to your problem is more. Like you need more columns, you need more tables, you need more steps, you need more time. You're skipping over a whole bunch of things that need to happen. Uh, and this is just a gen standard thing that we all do it. I do it all the time. I find myself like deep inside of like a 15 step process only to find out that like at step four, there's really two more things we got to put inside. So, you know, it's just something we all fall in. Yeah, the app broke. So I can't, show, <laughs> I can't show you what it, <laughs> what that would look like, but you saw how to set it up. Uh, if all your tables are set up the right way, that'll work and you'll now have a derivative list of all of the available options for that specific location. Hope it helps. Let me know if it didn't make any sense. I can redo videos like this if it's just kind of confusing. You know what I mean? And if you need any clarifications, I'm always here. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the community.